I'm a Hindu. I know what I'm meant to believe, but I just don't feel it. I'm willing to go as far as I have to go to get that feeling in my heart of being totally connected to the divine. Reshma has quit her job, said goodbye to her family, and to find what she's looking for, she's heading back to her spiritual homeland. Feels so good. <laughs> Being in the water with millions and millions of people, all of us yearning for the same thing at the same time. Believing that we are all in this together. The answer I was looking for was within me the whole time. Well, there it is. It's part of a series that Oprah Winfrey put together. Hello, friends. Welcome to In the Market with Janet Parshall. Let me give you this by way of background, all right? Obviously, I think it's pretty plain to just about anybody who's read or listened to any of our conversation that religion, more to the point spirituality, is a very big deal in the life of Oprah Winfrey. But the question is, given the fact that she clearly is a woman of influence, what message is she sending? She was so passionate about this project that she decided not even to seek funding. Rather, she used her own money to fund a seven-night series called Belief. She is a strong believer that, quote, your beliefs really determine what you manifest in your life. And so the team on OWN, the Oprah Winfrey Network, decided that they would go out and try to find the most compelling and thoughtful stories of faith, love, and devotion from around the world. In the words of Oprah, it was kind of a global town hall meeting. So she did this for close to three years and then put it all together in a seven consecutive night program that aired on her network. Will it stay only on her network? Only time will tell. And during the course of this series, people viewing it could see spiritual journeys through the eyes of people like the young woman you just heard, a young Indian American Hindu woman who travels to the banks of the Ganges River in India. She wants to rediscover her faith. Then you'll also hear the story of an atheist mountain climber who believes there's no greater power than just being present. A dying Aboriginal elder in Australia who wants to pass on the wisdom and beliefs of his tribe to his grandson. A 13-year-old Jewish boy in Hungary who's getting ready to have his bar mitzvah. A paralytic and his wife who draw on their love and evangelical Christian faith to see them through their daily challenges and other stories. Again, going back to her idea that your beliefs really determine what you manifest in your life. Is she right? Is there a kind of deadly deception here that needs to be discussed? Let me invite our friend Dr. Ron Rhodes to join us. He's president of Reasoning from the Scriptures Ministry. This dear man has authored more than 70 books. He is a superb apologist. He loves the Word of God, and God has gifted him in a very profound way to be able to do clear, practical teaching telling us exactly what the scriptures say. So he speaks at conferences all across the country, and he often teaches at university seminaries in particular, where he teaches, as an example, cult apologetics at Veritas Evangelical Seminary, or Dallas Theological Seminary, or Talbot, Biola. The list goes on and on and on. And you and I, while we might not be seminarians, have an opportunity to read his works nonetheless, because as I noted earlier, he is such a prolific author. Ron, this is such an important topic, because... The affability of Oprah is undeniable, and her personability is clearly there. But the problem is there needs to be a caveat emptor put in place. Buyer beware of what she's selling, because it seems to me the subtext in the series is as long as we recognize that we're on a journey, as long as we realize that God is in everything and all things, there really is no right and wrong. There really is no clear path. In fact, in our language... The way is not straight and the gate is not narrow because all of these experiences have equal truths and equal values. What's wrong with that idea? Well, you put it so well, uh, Janet, and I'm so glad that you're doing this broadcast today because I think that this show is probably going to reach a lot of people. 
Uh, categorizing Christianity as a belief, among other beliefs, like she has done, in my opinion, subtly removes Christianity's complete uniqueness. And as you've noted, it communicates the idea that you can have your truth and I can have my truth, and all of the religious options before us are equally true. And uh, for that reason, I think that there's a, an inherent danger in this. Uh, for example, what need is there for Christian evangelism and apologetics? Uh, after all, if you can have your truth and, and I can have my truth and they're all equally valid, then there's really no need for me to go out and evangelize and reach people with the truth that Jesus communicated. And so I think that in the midst of a world that is already very confused about religion, and in the midst of a world where there's a lot of people going to war over religion, I think that this broadcast could not be more important. Mm. Ron, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I want our friends, as we're talking, to come up with questions, questions that really help us learn to discern. Are all faiths equal? Are all paths interchangeable? Are there many routes to God? And if so, then what do you do with the declarations of Jesus Christ? 877-548-3675. That's our number, 877-548-3675. Much more right after this with Dr. Ron Rhodes. If you want to expand your humanity just a little bit, if you just want to, without spinach, if you just want to like say, wow, I want to feel good about my own life and looking at other people's lives, you want to feel connected. It's like a big old community gathering around the world in a way that people just don't do on television. So I, uh, I'm, I'm pleased that I was able to get it done. And satisfied that it will live on beyond anything I can do or say. It will find its audience and find its way. Now I should be starting questioning things. Why is the sky blue? Why is the grass green? Is God the person with the old white beard? We live in a world where when your belief isn't the same, you literally can get your head chopped off. So we live in a world where not only can you get your head chopped off, you can be, uh, you know, severed, you know, electronically through social media. You say something that somebody doesn't agree with and they immediately are on the attack. What I know in my maturity is that the real purpose of being human beings on the planet is that we, we are all different in search of the same thing. We're all yearning for the same thing, but we have different ways and different approaches to doing that. That's what being a human being is. Maybe on there are other planets out there where everybody is the same, but here we're all different. And we're not just supposed to learn to tolerate each other's differences. The real deal is accepting the differences and learning to live with the differences. Because at the heart of who we are, we are more alike than we are different. This is something that she's been really excited and inspired about. You know, from the from the time I saw on the set at Selma, she was like, this this piece I did called Belief is incredible. You, it will it will open you up to, to new things. And I was like, I want that for my life. So I mean, I'm, I'm just honored and grateful that she's taking the time to do this and I could be in the presence of so many people. And this is something with a, with a spiritual foundation to it. Yes, and that's why we're having this this conversation. Open you up to new things is also why we're having this conversation. So there it was. She was dealing. This was an interview she did with USA Today, talking about her series where she put her own money in three years. And you heard, the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you heard her say that we're all different, but really and truly it's the same quest. Yes, but Dr. Ron Rhodes, president of Reasoning from the Scriptures Ministry, we might all be on the same quest. That I believe. God has placed eternity in our hearts. Blaise Pascal was right. There resides in the heart of each of us a God-shaped void, and only a personal relationship with him can fill it. But it doesn't mean that all paths will land you at the base of the cross, and that is the only truth. Now, I realize that that is an elitist statement to some. It is an exclusionary statement to others. I choose to look at it as the most exclusive, 
inclusive and at the same time inclusive declaration humankind has ever heard. So there's a danger here that's saying that all truths are equal. Logic 101 says that can't possibly be the case. You know, I think that you're right there, Janet. I think that uh, there's a person on the show, <clears throat> according to an article that I read, that said that we are more alike than we are unalike. And I would say that if Christianity were simply a system of ethics, then yes, we could say that the religions are essentially similar, but Christianity is not just a system of ethics. You see, Christianity portrays man's problem as more heinously worse than any other religion. That is to say we're dead in sin. And the whole Bible is a story of redemption showing God's activity, particularly through Jesus, to bring salvation to a fallen humankind. And that separates Christianity from all other religions. The truth is that uh, Christianity and the world religions are not essentially the same social differences. Rather, Christianity and the world religions are essentially different with only superficial similarities. And in my thinking, uh, Janet, don't you think we need to draw a distinction between belief and truth? Hmm. Uh, yeah. It seems to me that, that we need to begin there. Contrary beliefs are possible, but contrary truths are not possible. This is what Excellent you pointed point. out just a moment ago. Yep. You can believe everything is true, but everything can't be true. And so contrary beliefs are possible, but contrary truths are not possible. And what that means for this discussion is not every religion can be true. If one is true and it's contradictory to the other religions, then the others, by logic, must necessarily be false. Exactly. Now, I want to ask a question that has everything in the world to do with this costume called flesh, if I can paraphrase the great bard for a moment. No one likes to be rejected or marginalized. And so when we utter the declarative statement that we believe to the marrow of our bones is absolute truth, that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but... <clears throat> by him that is exclusionary, but it's inclusive because everyone is invited to come to the foot of the cross. But the ridicule is palpable in something like this. For example, the Atlantic magazine, which is no friend of conservatives, writes, exclusivist believers tend to be allergic to anything with a pluralistic message that seems to erase <laughs> the lines of difference between their religion and others. Now, I really think that's an important qu statement for us to unpack, because if we're going to be courageous Christians between now and the day that Jesus takes us home, when being courageous is going to be more of a requirement in our following Jesus than perhaps it's ever been before, we're deemed to be exclusivists and we are allergic to pluralistic messages. That's a wonderfully interesting way to couch it, but it goes back to what you just said, Ron, which is either you're allowed to believe whatever you want, but there's only one transcendent truth, or the other option, which is unsubstanti unsubstantiated, which is all truths are equal. If that were the case, then there would be no truth. Well, that's right. I think it's a lot more accurate to say that exclusivists are allergic to falsehood. Uh, and, and the thing of it is, is that, you know, when Jesus talked, no matter where he was, no matter what town he was, no matter who he's talking to, he claimed that what he said took precedence over all others. And it's interesting how his followers picked up on that. And you quoted Jesus as saying, I'm the way and the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. And then Peter goes on to say that there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Now, I would like to suggest to you that, yes, that is a narrow claim and a narrow statement, but let me also suggest to you that just because something is narrow doesn't make it bad. Mm. You know, when I'm flying from uh, Texas to California, I want that plane to land on the right runway. That's narrow, <laughs> but that's good. Same way, sometimes <laughs> there's only one operation that can save my life. That may be narrow, but it's good. Yeah. Absolutely. Dr. Ron Rhodes is with us. So when there is a cultural phenomena, and there was a seven-night series funded by Oprah Winfrey herself called Belief, where she blurs the line of distinction between world religions, intimating that there are many paths to God, we're all just on a spiritual journey, then welcome to the marketplace. That's worthy of a discussion. We'll continue ours right after this.